Lord's house this morning. Glad to see each one of you. Glad to see the, the Lord's house filling up once again. Take your hymnals, if you will, and we're going to turn this morning to number 81. 81, when we see Christ, I think the day's getting sooner, isn't it? Stand with me if you're able, number 81. Of times the day seems long, our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away. All tears forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Sometimes the sky looks dark with not a ray of light. Tossed and driven on, no human help inside. But there is one in him who knows my deepest care. Let Jesus solve your problem. Just go to him in prayer. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Life's day will soon be o'er, well torn forever past. We'll cross the great divide to <clears throat> save at last. We'll share the joys of him. I'll harp a home a crown. The tempter will be banished. We'll lay our burdens down. It will be When we see Jesus, life's trials will seem so small. When we see Christ, one glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Amen. Brother Withrow, can I have you come up and uh, pray, pray uh, this morning, introducing the service? Let us bow for prayer, please. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this day that you've given to us. And Father, a day that we can glorify you, Father, in our, in our actions, in our talk, in our walk. And Father, I just thank you for this time that we can get together as a church. Thank you for our pastor. Pray, Lord, you bless him this morning as he preaches the gospel. And Lord, that our hearts would be open to hear what you would have for us today. Thank you so much for what you're going to do. If there's one here today and does not know you as their Lord and Savior, maybe this be the day that they give their heart and their life to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> number 70. Back a few hymns. Number 70. Will Jesus find us watching? 70. <clears throat> Oh, 
When Jesus comes to reward his servants, whether it be noon or night, faithful to him will he find us watching with our lamps all trimmed and bright. Oh, can we say we are ready, brother, ready for the soul's bright hope? Say, will he find you and me still watching, waiting, waiting what the Lord shall come? If at the dawn of the early morning he shall call us one by one, when to the Lord we restore our talents, will he answer thee, well done? Oh, can we say we are ready, brother, ready for the soul's bright home? Say, will he find you and me still watching, waiting, waiting when the Lord shall come? Verse 4. Blessed are those whom the Lord finds watching, in his glory they shall share. If he shall come at the dawn or midnight, will he find us watching there? Oh, can we say we are ready, brother, ready for the soul's bride home? Say, will he find you and me still watching? Waiting, waiting when the Lord shall come. Amen. Well, as far as announcements goes this morning, we do have our revival coming up here at the end of the month with Brother Daniel Knickerbocker from down in Texas. He'll be with us here. Last uh, spring, we had to have that on the set we weren't able to meet together but uh we're going to meet together this this fall and he'll be here with us down from texas so i'll ask you to set aside some money and love offering for him over the next few weeks um as we get ready for the lord to do a real work here in our community september 27th through 30th it's going to be a pleasure to have him here with us good to see the the fun growing for the roof we're up to about 12g now uh and uh, so I guess I was talking to a couple of the men. If we do it ourselves, we won't need so much more than that. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe have that planned for, may set a date for next, uh, next, early next summer or spring. Maybe we can do it then. Thank the Lord for that money growing and appreciate your faithfulness. We are going to try to have a fellowship next Sunday. You know, we put this off for so long. We're going to have, the, we usually have first of the month fellowship. We're going to have a, a birthday anniversary fellowship next Sunday morning. And so I think that'll be a blessing. Do remember to keep in prayer David Cottle. Uh, Miss Linda gave us a, a, an update this morning. He's going to be graduating out of rehab. Is that right? Uh, this week. So praise the Lord to see progress. Keeping him in prayer as he's down in Fort Wayne in the, in the hospital. Also remember Sam Ringler. He's uh, got some poor reports with cancer his lungs, stomach, and colon. Um, so in a lot of pain, do remember Sam. You know he'd be here if he could. And so remember Sam in prayer, as well as the Yoders. They called me this morning. They are not doing well. So remember Ray and Thelma. Farnham's are up in Everett, Michigan this morning at First Baptist. Be in prayer for them and their ministry. Uh, it's been going on for a year now. Uh, I was just a year ago last Sunday that I started candidating here in the church. So what a blessing the Lord has brought us through a whole year. And you guys have been very gracious. Thank you very much. Um, last week, my wife and I were up in, in um, well, we went to the UP for church Sunday morning. And I really appreciate, you know, being able to take vacation. Thank you so much for that privilege. Thanks for the withrows for filling in for us, being a blessing here at the church. Uh, we really enjoyed ourselves last week. Uh, week in uh, Mackinac uh, City, Mackinac Island, and real tourist tra trap there. We were able to spend a lot of money. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm going to ask Brother uh, Merlin if you'll come this morning and read for us Psalm number two. You know, as, as, the, as the day approaches, as we see the day approaching, um, oftentimes we get stuck looking at 
the devil's work. We need to focus on what the Lord is doing. So read for us Psalm number two, if you will. What a blessing to still have the word of God that we can read. Amen. <clears throat> Psalm two. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Amen. That's good reading right there, isn't it? Notice that the, the Lord didn't, or the, the psalmist didn't say, ask of me and I will give the heathens stuff. For thine inheritance now we're, we're supposed to ask for the heathen souls for an inheritance there um thank you brother merlin i'm going to ask uh, the ushers to come this morning and uh, as has been our custom if you can allow the ushers to to keep that uh plate in their hand and not pass it we'll just do our part in not spreading uh, a couple germs that'll that'll be good also do remember margie she's traveling back from Pensacola this morning uh, and this afternoon. So she's on the road right now uh, after taking her sister down to college. So, Brother Gene, could I ask you to ask the Lord's blessing upon the offering? Father, thank you, Lord, for your blessings this week. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be here this morning. We pray you be with our service. That we give you the glory for it. We pray, Father, for the offering to give to the giver. We pray for the message, Lord, that will be something that we need. Open our minds, Lord, and open our hearts, Lord, that we can just Take in what it said. We should thank you for all these things in Jesus Christ be praised. Number 97. Take your hymnals again. 97. I need thee every hour. If you don't realize you do, then you need to get that wet wood dried up and on fire. Number 97. I need thee every hour. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine and peace of war. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee every hour. Stay thou near Patient lose their power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, 
I need Thee, every hour I need Thee, how oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour, in joy or pain, come quickly and abide, for life is I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. Over to number 106, 106, just a couple verses of this, one and two. Of 106, abide with me. <clears throat> abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other Hail and comforts me, help of the helpless, who oh, abide with me. Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Her's joys grow dim. His glories pass away, change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. Amen. Good singing this morning. Thank you. I asked Brother Joseph if he'd uh, bring a special to us this morning. So, Brother, you come and uh, share with us the song the Lord has laid on your heart. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, the Lord lay in my, high, in my heart two songs, and according to where we sing it, I think one is appropriate. I hope that the one I will choose today. Um, as we go to trials and tribulations in our life, we are very grateful for the Lord for His salvation. Um, he has promised us that He will never leave us nor forsake us, and His promises are true. Um, we don't know what's going to happen in this moment of tomorrow or the future. But we know that our God is in control. Amen. Amen. So uh, if you know the song, feel free to sing to our Lord with me, okay? Amen. And I think you know the song. Uh, because he lives.
Thank you, brother. What a blessing. Take your Bibles this morning, if you will, here for a few moments. We're going to turn to the book of Romans. The apostle Paul wrote to the epistle to the Romans, the church in Rome. We're going to turn over to chapter 13. I know a, I uh, spoke from here a few months back, maybe a couple months back, but we're going to concentrate on a couple verses that maybe I didn't hit quite as hard. Starting in verse number 11, Romans chapter 13, verse number 11, and that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to join together in thy house. Lord, not because we are good people, but because we are sinners saved by grace. Lord, we thank you for that fact. We come before thee asking for each one to be met exactly where he is sitting. Lord, maybe there's someone here that needs salvation. Lord, I pray that you would help him to humble himself and uh, come to the cross. Pray that you would uh, bring comfort to those needing comfort. Bring conviction to those needing conviction. Lord, I pray that you would forgive us from sin, empty us of self, and bring us to the Savior this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The, 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 the uh, phrase that jumped out to me here in this passage is high time. It is high time. I don't know if this is a saying around here, but where I grew up, it was a saying, high time. You know, it's interesting as you read through the Bibles, Bible on a regular basis, how many phrases that we say on a regular basis come right out of the Bible. Now, maybe that's increasingly uh, decreasing, but a few, I've mentioned here, a few here as I begin. In Genesis, when Laban came and caught up to Jacob and his crowd leaving uh, Syria, uh, he, he said, I have learned by experience. 
How many people use that term? Learn by experience that the Lord has blessed me because of you. Learn by experience. In 1 Samuel, we have the phrases, he put his life in his hands. Jonathan was talking to his father Saul, defending David, and he said, David put his life into his own hands, and he went out there and fought the giant. We have the phrase, uh, nowadays, Nabal, Nabal said to, to David, nowadays, many people leave their masters. How many people use the term nowadays? It's a Bible term. Uh, Job used the phrase, the skin of my teeth. The psalmist coined the phrase, out of the mouth of babes and at his wit's end. There you go. At his wit's end. Solomon penned the phrases, the apple of his eye. The, what we would say, a little bird told me. He says, uh, a bird of the air shall carry the voice. The little foxes spoil the vine. vine. Isaiah uses the phrases, not a peep, a drop in a bucket. Eye to eye, holier than thou, phrases we use every day. Um, Jeremiah refers to the gadabout and the good for nothing. Jesus used the term salt of the earth. Let this sink into your ears. Eat, drink, and be merry. Safe and sound, a stone's cast. Speaking of a stone's cast, my wife and I were in Mackinac City uh, on uh, last weekend, and uh, we were a stone's cast from the Stefanovs who are up there as well. Just one, one uh, building over, and we didn't see them all weekend. <laughs> so there you go, a stone's cast. That's a phrase of Jesus. In Acts, Paul uses the term, none of these things move me. I'm not moved by any of this. And Festus said to Paul, thou art beside thyself. Now, interesting how many of these phrases come right out of the Bible. But here we are in Romans, and Paul uses the term high time. When I was growing up, uh, we used the term all the time. It's high time you grew up. It's high time you got your head out of the sand. It's high time he realized what her agenda really was. We use that, that term uh, a lot. And uh, why? It's high time you get your act together. Why? Because it's overdue. That's why. It's overdue. How many, how many people have had overdue, overdue bills? It's high time you pay them. It's high time, um, or your power will be cut off. No longer have access to that privilege. Have uh, overdue library books. No, not too many readers here. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I know a couple of my kids have overdue library books. They've read a few times. Well, the Apostle Paul gives us several things here that are overdue. And if we don't get our act to get together on these things, we will miss out. We will miss out on the benefits. We will miss on, out on the power that has been cut off. Um, and he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. These are the things that we will miss out, the benefits that we will miss out on. And I'm convinced that many times in my pursuit for life, liberty, and happiness, or the American dream, I often lose out on real life. I often lose out on real liberty and real happiness because it's not found in the things of the world. It is found in Jesus Christ alone. And when I get to heaven and have a perfect understanding of everything that went on here on earth, I'm sure I will say to myself, I gave up that and took that? Wow, what was I thinking? Could I not have the foresight? Well, um, churches and Christians in America today are all wrapped up in pursuing the American dream. Uh, wrapped up in the good paying job, wrapped up in the popularity, wrapped up in the toys and the RVs and the quads and the, and the boats and, and, and all the, the luxury vacations and the bikes. Ooh, I just hit myself there. <laughs> and we forget about the real reason we're here. You know, every one of these things, our freedoms, our possessions, could be all taken away with us with one bad government. We need to be gathering to ourselves treasures that cannot be taken away. Any man-centered, humanistic government will be oppressive and will take away, no matter what they promise. They'll promise you the sun and deliver darkness. But um, nonetheless, 
It's high time we start doing. The Apostle Paul tells us that there are several things that it is high time that it's overdue that we start doing these things and stop doing these things. And so I want to look at a few of these things here. Number one, it's, it's high time we awake out of sleep. It's high time we awake out of sleep. Uh, the physical sleep, our laziness, our lethargy. High time we awake out of that. It's high time we wake out of soul or, or spiritual sleep. Um, putting off reforms, putting off corrections, putting off the things that the Lord is speaking to us for another day. I'll just, I'll table that. You know, the Lord convicted me this morning, but I'm not going to go, go forward. People might see me and think I'm sinful. We all are. Get over it. Amen. It's high time America wakes up to what's going on in our country. If we don't wake up by November 3rd, we might be in for a little bit more midnight than we expected, sooner, sooner than we expected. And I might say, dark days are coming. They are coming. The Bible tells us about that, but they might be here sooner than we expect. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations. We're part of all nations, folks. America is part of all nations. We're seeing a lot of hatred today. I might also say, don't fix your eyes on the evil around you. There's plenty to look at. We need to fix our eyes on our salvation. Amen. Or else we'll get discouraged and we'll get taken aside by all that that's going on as well. So many last day prophecies uh, coming that we could see happening today. And who's to say that the Lord's coming may be just around the corner. But we, we, we have a... Uh, uh, we can get pretty worked up if we focus on what the devil's work doing and forget about the Lord's power. That's why I had Brother Merlin read that this morning. God's not upset. God's not worked up. You know, I've been noticing a trend lately. We're getting into more and more a cashless society. Have you noticed that? You go to Walmart, these lanes are credit only. That one down there that you had to walk to, that one's cash. You got cash, you get out of there. <laughs> um... I was on the BMV website the other day, and right on the website it says, if you're coming to the BMV, bring credit or exact cash. Uh, I was at a coffee shop. Actually, it's Tim Hortons on our, on our uh, uh, vacation, and there was a sign that said it the way actually it is. It read like this. The Federal Reserve is limiting the production and distribution of change for the foreseeable future. Therefore, all businesses will be running low on change. We respectfully request you to pay exact change elect or electronically. How about that? You look around us. I mean, I could go on and on with uh, the microchips and the advancement in technology and the space exploration. Um, and uh, you know that they're going to be up there. I mean, the, the Daniel tells us that, that uh, the... The uh, uh, any any Christ anyway I forget what he's referred to whether it's a goat or what it is there in that passage cast the stars down from heaven uh, personally I believe that's probably satellites but uh, there's more and more of them going up isn't there and there's more and more control being taken of space but we we look around us we see Daniel like and Re Revelation like prophecies coming into fulfillment very easy to become fearful but let me encourage you with this nothing ever happens that god doesn't allow doesn't happen but god allows it never has never will when the devil cast all of his evil on job it was nothing more than god allowed and god worked it around for a blessing to job when devil uh, cast his evil on joseph god turned it around for good and nothing happens. You know, if we are living in the last days, if, if we are at that point in history, uh, evil will abound. It will, more and more. But only at the specified rate that God allows. That's it. That's it. And I think probably some of that will be controlled by our prayer. If you and I aren't on our knees, we won't have prayers to be answered. We need to be on our knees. Psalm number eight, 118, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do uh, to me. We need to be on the Lord's side. 
Psalm number 12, I mean, uh, 2, that I had Merlin read this morning. There's five things that, that they mentioned that the, 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 the evil man is doing, that the heathen are doing, and then there's five things that uh, the Lord is doing. I'd rather be on the Lord's side. Why do the heathen rage? Oh, they're raging. And the uh, people imagine a vain or an empty thing. The things of this world are empty. They don't resolve in anything more. I mean, you go to the bar, you're going to need to go there again tomorrow to forget your sorrows too. Imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing say, anointed saying, uh, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. What's the Lord doing? He's sitting there. He's not up there wringing his hands, wondering what he's going to do. No, he's sitting in his heavens and laughing. Do you see what they're doing down there? That is so predictable. He sits in his heaven and he laughs. And the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. The Lord's not upset. He's not wondering what to do next as the, as the devil thrashes around down here on earth in that one last final attempt. You ever watch a show, or maybe you're a fisherman, but um, you ever watch a show on fishermen where they're bringing in these big fish, and maybe a swordfish or something, and uh, they got them, the fish is hooked. There's nothing he can do about it. He's hooked. But he's, he's thrashing, and as they bring him in, and just before they clear the water, there's this mad thrashing and stirring up the water as he makes one last desperate effort to get free, to win the victory. That's where the devil is right now. One last final thrashing. He knows his fate. He's going to be thrown into the bin with the other fish. He's going to be thrown into, the, into the, the, the bottomless pit for a thousand years. He knows it. Everything that God had said for the last 6,000 years has played out just the way God said it would. The devil knows the Bible. He doesn't like it. He's in that final struggle before his doom. As I said earlier, it's high time for America to wake out of sleep. But it is impossible for America to wake up if we Christians and if we churches don't get awake too. Not possible. The lifeblood of reform, the, the, the life and the hope for revival will not be stirred if I won't get down on my knees. If I won't get sincere and real and make a difference and, and light that flame and be a light in the world, it'll be nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Today's church is sluggish. Today's church is sleepy. And, uh, oh, they'll be part of some massive crusade that, that is showy. But every day-to-day -day struggle, every day-to-day -day life uh, picking up that cross, denying myself, no part of it. No desire to be a part of a daily life separated for God. Solomon says something about the sluggard, the lazy man. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou rise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty, that's spiritual poverty, for you and me. Come as one that traveleth. You're going to run out. Oh, it might be fun for a couple days, but you'll run out. And thy want as an armed man can't be resisted. You know, it's very easy to slip into a Sunday morning Christianity. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. Ah, uh, how many people have you heard say, I don't want to talk about religion or politics? You're missing two of the most important things to talk about. Two of the most important things to talk about, especially uh, religion, so to speak. Real religion. Our laziness, our tears, our fears, our excuses. We're going to regret them someday. And uh, we need to wake up. It's high time you and I wake up. You know, it's clear here that the Apostle Paul is speaking to believers. He's, he's talking to you and me. He's not talking to the unsaved here. He speaks of our salvation, our salvation. Our salvation is nearer than when we believed. 
You know, I used to think that this is uh, speaking, this verse was saying our uh, salvation is closer than we thought it was. You know, kind of like um, on the mirror, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. But I think what it's saying is, you're closer than when you were saved. What have you been doing about it? Have you been living for the Lord? Have you been testifying for the Lord? Have you been doing uh, the things to bring others to Christ? We're closer than when you were saved, than when you believed. Closer to the fulfillment of salvation. We have the, the promise of salvation. We don't have the fulfillment. We, we have the earnest of our inheritance. Use your time wisely. Redeem the time. Colossians chapter 4. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Redeeming the time. Time is coming to a close. Time is coming to a close. I believe we are probably very close. You know, it's interesting to see that the Apostle Paul here focuses on the work of Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit, the salvation. The Apostle Paul isn't focusing on what the devil's doing. He's not focusing on who's the Antichrist. He's not focusing on the evil that is abounding in the wor world today. Uh, not mentioning the, the raging of the heathen or, or the, uh, the abuses of rulers. There's plenty of that in his day and there's plenty of that today for you and me. If we want to focus on that and get all consumed with fear... We don't need to. He focuses on power. He focuses on salvation. Today, all who have called upon the Lord Jesus Christ have the Holy Spirit dwelling within. If you do not have the Holy Spirit dwelling within, you're not saved. Because when you are saved, He is dwelling within, convicting. He will not let you go. He will not stop working upon your heart. Praise God. If you do not have salvation... You don't have the earnest of the inheritance. You don't have that promise that one day you will go to heaven. If you do not have salvation, it is high time you got salvation settled. It is. It is high time you humbled yourself and got on your knees and said, I know I'm not good enough. No, nothing I can do is good enough. I'm putting my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, well, time is getting on. Um... Number two, it is high time that we cast off the work of darkness and put on the armor of light. High time. Cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. It goes without saying, darkness and light cannot abide together. Light drives away the darkness. The dawn of a new day drives away the darkest part of night. No doubt we are in the darkest hour America has ever experienced. It's getting darker every day. The night is far spent. You know, it's your and my works that determine that darkness. If our works are godless and, and for the things of this world, we contribute to the darkness. America has consistently been driving God out. You know, God's a gentleman. You say no to God, he'll step back. He doesn't have to. He could take control, but he doesn't because he gives us that independence. We will have to answer for our decisions, but America has been saying no God, no more God for so long. No more Bibles, no more prayer in our schools. How many years has it been? No more God, push God out. No more Ten Commandments in our courtrooms. No more prayer meetings at the, at the beginning of government settings, uh, sessions. Kill the unborn. Create legislation to support and protect all sorts of immorality. Push God out. Push God out. We're becoming darker and darker. Every time we say no more to God, our works create a disturbing darkness. It's not a pleasant place because the devil lives there. Personally, if you and I will be used of God, used of God, we have to put off the works of darkness. We cannot be a part of this wickedness that is around us. We cannot be a part of that. You cannot witness for God and, and, and have a foul mouth. You can't do it. 
You've got to put off that work of darkness, that foul mouth, before you can be used of God in a witness. Because people are going to watch what you are, not what you say. You cannot be used of God all day long and fill your mind with filth and garbage at night on the TV. Can't do it. Can't do it. You know, I have found that if I want the Lord to speak to me when I need Him, I have to be with Him and close to Him and clean, cleaned up with Him even when I, can I say, the pressure's off. Monday. Well, the pressure's off. I already preached on Sunday. So I can do what I want. No, I can't. Right. I better not. Because I need him come Wednesday. Well, I need him Monday too. <laughs> but the pressure's on Wednesday and Sunday. If you know what I mean. So <clears throat> we need to uh, be purified and clean, fit for the master's use. It's high time we cast off these filthy works of darkness. Why? Because you can't put on the armor of light if you're clothed in the filthy works of darkness. They don't fit over top. The armor of light doesn't fit over top of your filthy works of darkness. It doesn't work that way. You know, when it's, uh, let's say Wednesday night, you're, you, you've worked a hard, uh, hard day of work and you go home all dirty and sweaty and your jeans are ripped. You don't go home, walk in the door and put a suit, uh, pants and, and jacket over top and put a tie on and go, go to... It doesn't fit. Your pants won't go on over top of the old. No, you go in and you cast them off. They're dirty. They're filthy. You get cleaned up and you put on something nicer and you go to church. That's the way it works. So it is in our lives. If we want to shine forth for Jesus, we must first put off the old man. Put off those filthy works of darkness. Put them off. Get rid of them. And put on his righteousness, his armor clothed in his righteousness and uh, number three high time we walk honestly in verse 13 let us walk honestly as in the day as christians we are particularly enjoined to be honest citizens pardon me walk honestly in the light of the son of righteousness jesus christ as if jesus were here he is but as if you could see him walk as if you he was right here beside you and so, first of all, we need to get honest with God. First of all, in our honesty as believers, it's high time we get honest. We need to get honest with God. God knows who we are. Get real with Him. Get real with God. Tell Him the way it is. Tell Him how you feel. Tell Him what you thought. Confess your evil thoughts. Confess your deeds. Tell Him exactly where you went. Get real. What you did. What you said. What you thought. James chapter 4. We were in James, James this morning. James chapter 4. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. If you don't draw nigh to him, you won't give him the opportunity to draw nigh to you. He's, he's waiting for you to reach out. Waiting for you to draw nigh. Cleanse your hands, ye sinner. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. We also need to get honest with ourselves. Get honest with God. Get honest with yourself. Don't deceive yourself. Over and over, the, uh, the, the, the King Solomon in Proverbs tells of uh, the fool who goes this way and goes down that path and he is drawn aside. Well, the fool deceives himself that his, his real purpose isn't to go in the path of evil, but he gets drawn aside. No, his real purpose was to go down past the, the harlot's house. He wanted to see how close he could get to sin before he got drawn in. And he got drawn in. You and I need to be real with ourselves and honest with ourselves. But what our motive is so that we can stop it. Amen. Get honest. Why you went that way. Why you watched that show. Why you... We fool ourselves into believing all sorts of things. We need to get honest with ourselves. We need to get honest, number three, with the world. There's no greater turnoff to the world than a fake, than a hypocrite. They can see right through us. You know, the world knows what a Christian should look like. It does. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, got to find it here. Your actions speak so loud, I cannot hear what you're saying. 
we used to sing a song. I don't know if I can remember it, but when we were kids, uh, what you are, speak so loud that the world can't hear what you say. They're looking at your walk, not listening to your talk. They're judging from your actions every day. And it goes on, but that's the whole idea. They're looking at your walk. They know what you should be doing. They know what you should, where you should be going and where you shouldn't. Oh, they'll laugh along when you go and do the wrong thing. But they know what. They, they, they can't stand a hypocrite. I'm not saying that we need to be open and honest and air all our dirty laundry. No, private sins need to be confessed privately. Public sins publicly. But there are things that we need to get real about. Hey, these are the struggles that I deal with. They're probably the same thing you deal with. And this is how the Lord helps me take care of it. These are the things, I'm just a, a horrible sinner like you are, but I was saved by grace and you can be too. Get honest. Get honest with the world. Uh, continuing on there in verse number 13, the solution to life's problems is not found in the world. Not in rioting and drunkenness. That's what the world will tell you. You know, everybody needs to, to knock it down a little bit, ease back, lay back, have a drink, just forget your troubles. No. Yeah. There you go, Pepsi. That's right, brother. <laughs> not in rioting and drunkenness. It's not a solution. As Christians, we want to make a difference. We'll need to be a little different. Uh, not in chambering and wantonness. We would say gross immorality, sleeping around. Not, no solution found in that. You know, immorality of all stripes has become so commonplace that even Christians think nothing of it. There's Christians in churches all across America that claim to be born again that are shacked up. Think nothing of it. Not in strife or envy. Wow, i got to move on here pretty quick. Some people have a reputation of just being contrary. You ever know that person that no matter what you do, it's wrong? I would have done it this way. I would have done it that way. Well, last week I did it that way and you said the opposite. <laughs> just want to be fighting. You know, you can't be a witness for God and just be fighting all the time, striving all the time. You want to be a witness for God Get rid of that strife and envy spirit. It's pretty hard to be a, a witness for the Lord and have that negativity. It's high time, folks, we get honest. That's number three. It's high time we get honest. Number four, very quickly, it's high time we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's high time. Salvation, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ is a one-time decision. When you have accepted Christ and humbled yourself and called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says that you are in his hands and no man can pluck you out of his hands. He's got a grip nobody can break. But putting on the Lord Jesus Christ is a daily thing. Salvation is one time. You are secure. Putting on the Lord Jesus Christ is not a one-time thing. It is a daily thing. Sometimes it's a many-a-time day thing, isn't it? Oh boy, did I slip up. i got to get back here and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to his disciples after the miracle of the uh, feeding of the 5,000, he said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Daily. You know, our natural thing is, I wish it was a once and done thing. Get it over with. You know, how many of us would be here if it was a once and done thing? Probably not too many. Probably not too many. But here, God daily gives us a new chance to be right with him. Daily. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. His forgiveness is right there every night. Putting on the Lord Jesus Christ is like putting on your clothes in the morning. Don't get up and put on those filthy, dirty, ripped ones that you had on yesterday and cover with grease. Put on a new pair. Have it fresh. Have it smelling good. Don't go out into the world smelling like the world. Put on something good and fresh. Every morning is a new opportunity. Start out with a fresh outfit, a new putting on of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yesterday might have been ruined. It might have been ripped up. It might have been filthy. But today, God gives us 
a fresh start. Get up and put the Lord Jesus Christ on. It's high time we did that. Get down before you start the day on your knees in prayer. Before you start the day, get in his word and get something fresh out of that fountain. Get something to revive you. Make not provision for the flesh, it says here. We need to stop giving ourselves open opportunities to sin. Close that door. If you leave it open, there's going to be an opportunity the devil will put in your way for you to walk through. Make not provision for the flesh. And my time is gone, so I will close. Close the door on the opportunities to do wrong, or you will find opportunity to go through. It's high time, folks. It's high time. High time that we awake out of sleep and get on. Put off the works of darkness. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, it is high time and we thank you that you have given us the instruction, you have given us the encouragement and the power within to accomplish. Lord, may we be lights in this dark world. May we stand. May we settle it today. I'm going to stand with the Lord Jesus Christ. I am going to be one of the faithful. Lord, if there's any here this morning or listening online that has not humbled himself before thee, not realized that uh, his no works that he considers to be a good work will get him to heaven. The only thing is the forgiveness, acceptance of our Lord Jesus Christ, calling upon his name, believing in him. And Lord, that opportunity is to everyone today, whosoever. Lord, I pray that you would be glorified as we disperse, disperse as we dismissed, and that you be glorified in our lives, each one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.